All right, this one's a juicy one. And that one like messed me up, but everybody wants to know who paid for what? How do you guys pay for this and that? Who's going to be proposing to who? Do you deal with internalized homophobia from being in the South? Would we consider moving back to the East Coast? Well, I'd be hosting another group trip this year. I'm talking about people who may just be a little clingy. Buckle up. Um, hello you guys, welcome to a new video for this week. I just wanted to sit down and chat. Today I'm doing, I feel like what is a long overdue q and I feel like I do these like quarterly, maybe semi-annually. So I've gathered some questions over on Instagram recently as well as some of these are just frequently asked questions that I've gotten a lot and just have never really addressed. Some of which are juicy, some of which have a little tea in there, and then some are just, you know, straightforward questions. But I'm just gonna jump straight in with how has puppy training been going? So if you didn't know, a few months ago, we got a little puppy. Her name is Mia. She's a multi poo. She's like five months old now. And largely it has been going well. She is like, I mean, being a puppy, I'll be real. All right, I'll be real for a second. I had the puppy blues for like, a stretch like a good week or so like early early on as you know she's getting used to living here and she's a puppy and she's figuring out life um and we are like integrating her into our routines and whatever just trying to train her there was a dark stretch <laughs> not dark but where i was just like have we made a mistake like how is anyone a parent like much less a dog like i can't do this and i actually was like looking up tiktoks on like puppy blues and whatever and just like knowing that this is something that a lot of people go through in the early stages of having a pet or a puppy and that like it does get better i was like okay i feel like i'm not alone like it really actually was helping um so that ended quickly as she like you know got trained, right? But I think we got very lucky that we got a very sweet dog. She loves to cuddle. She's like, I mean, well-behaved, has been easy to train, is like easy to take around. Did you know we're talking about you? She's walking over here. Come here. Okay, just rejection, it's fine. I would say the only thing we are like struggling with, I think she has a little bit of separation anxiety. So I am including this question because I would love to ask you guys for tips if you have had dogs or like puppies especially that have dealt with this and how you overcame it. We'd love to kick this habit young, but enough about that. We are very happy dog moms. Next, ever since I've brought up ring shopping several months ago, I got a lot of questions about who is going to be proposing to who. So this is something I truly love about being in a queer relationship is we don't have traditions to follow. Not that even if you're like a straight couple, you have to follow certain like marriage traditions, engagement traditions, whatever, or who's taking whose last name or like any of that. But I love that when it comes to a proposal, like we get to just like come up with whatever plan we want, like of who wants to propose to who. I know a lot of people or a lot of like lesbian couples, like one proposes to the other and then one will like kind of propose back. I've seen a lot of people do that. We're not gonna do that. We've talked about it. Like, I don't remember like what the origin conversation was. But I just remember we quickly reached the conclusion that Giselle was going to propose to me. Um, she didn't, it's not like I feel strongly about being proposed to. I think it's just, honestly, I think it's like my internalized homophobia still that like, I got a question about that I'll talk about in a second, that like some part of me just doesn't feel comfortable being the one proposing, which is not a good thing. But also like, I think that me being proposed to, I think is going to help me be more present in that moment. Like you guys know, I am the events girl. I'm the planner, I'm type A, I'm, you know, frazzled. So sometimes even like recently, like we're going on certain trips, this and that. And I'm just, my mind's going through like, oh, this would be like such a good location to propose if like I were the one doing it. And then I start thinking like, oh, well, I want this proposal to be like exactly what like I want it to be. Maybe I should just be the one to do it. But that's just like me taking control. And I want this moment to be like a representation of both of us, but also like of Giselle. Like I, Giselle has great taste. Like I trust Giselle. Like I, I'm not saying I need some elaborate over the top thing. Cause my whole life I've never had like a dream proposal. And I think this goes back to like, maybe some of you guys can relate to this. Maybe before you realized you liked girls or whatever, you just didn't have these excited visions of like, going through all these life steps with like a man. So like, I just never cared. Like I'm excited to be like entering this next stage of life with her. And it's about like, just like, you know, it's about us. It's not about like the theatrics and whatever. So I'm going on like so many tangents here. I don't I feel like I've like half finished all of my thoughts. What I was saying is that I think me being on the receiving end of it is going to allow me to be present because I'm not gonna be thinking through like, oh, I hope the photographer is doing this. Like, oh, they didn't, you know, this detail is not worked out. Like I didn't have time to set this up. Like, you know, how I am in any kind of like hosting situation, not that that's what this is, but I think the same like thoughts and whatever applies. So I think that 
by me not worrying about any of the setup because Giselle doesn't get stressed in general. She literally never gets stressed. Maybe goes back to the lack of inner monologue. We've been through this, I don't know, but I think she'll be able to be fully present in it because she's not gonna stress about whatever else is, you know, she's planned and set up. Going back even farther to where I started was that Giselle just like, doesn't feel strongly about being proposed to. We even talked about like, do we wanna do a double proposal? Like, do you want me to propose back to you? That doesn't feel necessary. Like we're engaged, you know, like when she proposes to me, have both the rings ready, we're both putting them on. But again, I don't fully remember our original conversation, however long ago it was. She brought up that she wanted to be the one to propose. So um, that was such a long-winded answer to this question. Um, I'm feeling chatty at the moment. Yeah, so I don't know when it's coming just as much as you guys. Like I've said before, We've aligned on a timeline I'm not gonna share and it's not anytime soon, so no need to start firing off the are you getting engaged questions when we're like traveling this summer. Because I also don't trust Giselle to keep up with the rings for an international trip and I don't think she trusts herself, okay? So we can all just cross that off. So next question, kind of building on the last one, someone said, do you deal with internalized homophobia from being in the South slash a Christian environment? I think 100%. If you don't know what internalized homophobia is, it's kind of like, I mean, I'll put the definition on screen because I don't know how to describe it. I only know like the feeling of like where you're out, you're, or maybe not even out, but like where like for me, it's like, I'm obviously out. I'm so proud of my relationship. I'm so happy in my relationship. But like, there's a certain like degree of, that doesn't, isn't always present, but in certain situations or just like in little nuanced ways that it still affects me. Still this like shame element of like being gay because you have your own internalized homophobia against yourself, which is like, Weird because even when I thought I was straight, even when I was like deeply Christian and believed that being gay was wrong, it was like, I wasn't homophobic at the same time. Like I was the person in my Christian school philosophy class arguing in favor of like, should you bake the cake for the gay couple as a Christian bakery owner and blah, blah, blah. I was like the only person debating that side of things. And one, I guess my whole class won over a lot of them in the end. But as the years went on and whatever, I was like, I was never homophobic to other people. But like inwardly, you just, I feel like if you grew up in this environment, you just know, like, you know people's, even if they mean well, like, you know, certain people disagree with your lifestyle. People think that your relationship and your love and whatever is wrong, even if they are nice to you. It's just like an icky feeling to feel like certain people love you and whatever and want to be friends and this and that. But like at the end of the day, would they come to your wedding? Like I'm not close with any people like this. So like they're not invited to the wedding, but you know what I mean? Or like, oh, you love me, but like deep down you wish I were different. Like, it's just like not a good feeling to know anyone like that. And I think growing up Christian, even if you're not close with people like that, you know there are so many people like that that are around. As a result, I think many of us do have, so however slight, or maybe some people don't have it at all who grew up this way, but like just like internal resistance against, not against myself, like it's like I don't feel bad about being gay. I don't want to change that. Like, it's not like, oh, I'm ashamed I'm gay. It's more for me. I feel like a way this comes out is like when it comes to posting um, about Giselle, if you, some of you may notice, some of you have asked me before, Instagram, I hardly, hardly outwardly post like how I post here or how I post on TikTok about our relationship. And that's because everyone and their mom from my past, from my parents, friends, and people from church in the past and this and that, it's like, they all follow me on Instagram and I'm sure, I'm sure it's a hot, it was a hot topic. Everyone knows I'm gay, but I still have this like, ugh, it's like out of my comfort zone truly to like post about my relationship on Instagram. And like, like I don't throw up anniversary posts on that, maybe I will this year. And if I do, all of you better comment on it because it is like truly so out of my comfort zone that like that's like one of the few ways that comes out to me or, or for me. And I feel like another way that's not internalized homophobia, but I think that's just been like conditioning for, cause I got a question of like, what's it like being in a queer relationship? Do you ever feel safe in public? It's great being in a queer relationship. You guys know how amazing Giselle is, but yes, we feel, safe in public for sure. I don't think anyone's gonna come up and attack us or, you know, yell, swear in our face or anything. And that's part of why like we bought a home here. Like, you know, we didn't buy it in Texas or Florida, right? Like no, no hate to those of you guys that are from there, but hopefully you can like imagine how you would like tread lightly living in places like that maybe, or at least we would. Cause what I was going to say is that like Giselle and I both grew up similarly, similar backgrounds, Christian school, all of that. And so I feel like, you know, we have friends. We could be in any state, any country, this and that, and they're holding hands, they're kissing, they're just like outwardly showing affection and they're like totally comfortable with that. It's because like they grew up in cities and families and whatever where like they could like 
it was no big deal for them to come out. Like they could act like this. Like they didn't grow up around people that are homophobic. So maybe it doesn't feel as like near to them, but like Giselle and I to the question of, do we feel safe in public? Of course, but we don't feel hundred percent comfortable, like holding hands or making it obvious that we're on a date at restaurants all the time. You know, like there are those times that just like don't come super comfortably to us. It's not like natural to us to just assume everyone's like cool with us being a couple. So I don't know, am I making sense with any of that? So back to like the question of if I deal with it, I think yes, not in a sense at all of where like I wanna change myself, I have this hatred for myself, nothing like that at all. Like fortunately, I got over that years ago when I was like first struggling with like, do I like girls? Like, oh, what? Like this makes sense my whole life. That was a struggle for a really long time at first and I also got a question about like, would I share my whole coming out story? Let me know if you want like a whole YouTube video on that. I've never like told it start to finish. I've told like elements I think in past Q and A's, but I've thought about just like telling the whole story for a TikTok or like, I feel like it fits better on TikTok, but if you want it as like a whole YouTube video. So another question on that note was like, would we consider moving back to the East Coast? Obviously the whole East Coast is not the South. Like if I were to move to the East Coast, I wouldn't be moving to the Northeast. I'd be like probably moving to the South where like friends and family are and everything like that. You guys, we, we've we been living here less than, less than a year. So we're not moving anytime soon. I really don't see us moving back to the East Coast. Obviously never say never, but like, this house would be great for even like way down the line, you know, like raising kids in this house. We have the room. It's a great area. It's safe. There's good schools, whatever. So I really don't see us moving back. All right, this one's a juicy one. Well, I'd be hosting another group trip this year. Buckle up. So if you would have asked me this question anytime within the past like couple of months, like prior to that, I would have said no. There are two reasons why. Um, well, three reasons why. One has to do with me, one has to do with other people. I'll do it mine first. <laughs> Let me set a disclaimer. If you have been on my trips and you're watching this and you're like, where, where is this going? I actually went into like my Croatia trip and my Switzerland trip. When I was promoting those, I'm pretty sure I said like, these are my last group trips. So like, if you want to come on one, like get on these cause I'm not going to do another. But then I went on these and I was like, wow, I love these people. These are such cool people. I've made like such good friends with people from these trips and I just had the best time that like on one hand afterward and what has brought me back to like, okay, I do wanna host another of these. That's the conclusion. So hear me above everything that like I have loved these trips and love like 99% of the people that go on the trips. Now for my three reasons of my reasons against and why I thought I wasn't going to. You guys know I'm introverted at my core. I faked myself out there for a couple of years, really thought I was extroverted. So like, and I don't think I really noticed how introverted until I was on my Croatia trip. Like I've done a million group trips like this, um, you know, just Kentucky, EF, all of that, where like, I'm just on the trip. I'm not like hosting the trip, whatever. And in those situations, it's like, you hang out with people when you want. You, I go off with Adrian when I want, like we go to the hotel room, like we're on our own schedule and it's easy to create the balance of like, alone introvert time versus like social time. But I realized on the Croatia trip, I put a lot of pressure on myself and I think rightfully so. Like you guys are spending a lot of money to come on this trip, hopefully not just to spend time with me, which brings me to a next point, but, but to like explore this place. So I want everybody who comes on it to get, you know, everything they expected and wanted out of it. And there's a lot of people on the trip. So that means like, I gotta be hop in between. I gotta be a social butterfly, you know? And that just like, isn't natural to me. And like, I start to like burn out at a certain point when I'm like, I just need like, I just need to like mentally, like, you know, socially get some energy back. And I have, and I did make time for those things where I would just like go get dinner with Giselle or whatever, but I would feel like guilty about it because like I said, in short, it's just like, I don't ever want to be letting anyone down who comes on these trips. So that is my like first reason is like worrying that I can't like, personally deliver like what someone wanted or expected from me. Moving on to reasons two and three that I've debated talking about, but I do want to talk about for anyone who is like considering going on a future group trip because I want to like set mutual expectations from a very small percentage of people who have come on these trips. And I've tried to mostly keep these things to myself, even fr from addressing it with these people on the trips, because again, I don't want to interrupt anyone's good time, like whatever. I'm just trying to like deal with it all on my own. Reason two is that there have been small, small, small amount of people who have come on these that have invaded my privacy, like 
after the fact. If you want to ask me for tea on situations in person, I'll give you what I want to give you. Maybe I don't want to say anything. Maybe I do like dish out some personal stories or whatever, like in person, but I'm not going to elaborate, but my privacy has been violated after the fact. And that one like messed me up. I'm going to be honest. That like upset me where I had the assumption that like everyone coming on these trips is like a normal gal. And again, most have been, but, but it almost felt like this weird like betrayal of like thinking I'm just talking to you as a friend, as a peer, and that like you had other motives or that like you're not keeping this information to yourself. It's a mind trip where then I'm like having to think about everyone like, okay, well, you know, it's almost like spot the mole. Like who, like, can I trust the people? And then it's like, I don't want to ever be like putting walls up with people that come on these either when 99% of people are normal and like trustworthy. And like, that's not fair to other people. And like, I don't want to, spend my time on one of these trips being like worried about like just people's intentions. That one hurt. And so with that, we're doing a little vetting for future trips. Like if you're a new traveler, um, not to freak you out, you can just like, you sign up and book the trip normally. And then there's just gonna be a little form after where we acknowledge all of these things that we're all on the same page for mutual expectations and a mutual good time. Reason three, and this one is like, you know, not as black and white as reason two, but kind of also goes back to my introvertedness is that there have been a very small amount of people that haven't really made an effort to befriend anyone except for myself or like me and Giselle. And I get that people are shy. That's not a problem. I'm not talking about the shy people here. Like it's totally fine to be shy. That's not a con. That's not a bad thing. I'm talking about people who may just be a little clingy, who are cool people. You know, it's nothing against them as a person, but as the host, you know, I want to spend time with everyone. So I'll notice and I'll be like, okay, I haven't talked to this person. Let me go try to sit with them, you know, on the train. Let me walk while we're walking through the city. Let me go walk and talk to these people. So I try to make that effort. I'm not saying I'm perfect at it. It was in one of those moments where I started to notice that like, I couldn't really get away from one particular person who is nice. Again, it's not like, so it's not supposed to be personal about her. It's just about like the behavior where it started with like one situation where, you know, we were walking, we were going to get on a train and I'm like, okay, I've been spending a lot of time with this one person. Like I want to spend time with X, Y, Z. So I would like try to get near them and this person would follow me. And I was like, okay, I'm noticing now that they're like really clinging to me. So I would like switch up where I was walking in the group again. They would follow me again. And the last second I deviated to get on another um, cabin on the train or whatever they're called to like sit with other people and they were in line for the other one. Oh, what'd they do? They switched and like got on with me. And as you might imagine, like, and I hope this doesn't come across like mean cause it's not meant to be at all, but it's just like, I did start to feel like a little bit suffocated once I noticed that like, even when I'm trying to like switch up who I'm spending time with, like I really can't get away from this person. But that is just like my other concern is like, if you do choose to come on these, so many cool people and like great girls come on these trips, you'd be missing out if you're not like taking the chance to get to know like everybody. So, but all those reasons were leading me to like, I just don't think I'm gonna host another trip. Like it, all of that going through my head, like is a lot for me mentally, like in the moment. Time has passed. I found an itinerary I really wanna do, which is this Christmas markets trip going through Germany and the Czech Republic happening in December. And I'm choosing to look at the you know, 90% positives, the 99% of travelers that have come that like have made these so fun. So I've decided to do another one and the link is gonna be below. Next question is any travel plans this year? Giselle and I are just gonna do a trip, just us, uh, sometime this summer. And we're looking at bopping around again. We wanna go back to Mallorca really badly. We wanted to redeem our like airline flight or our airline miles with Delta. And it was like a freaking headache. Like everywhere we were trying to fly to, they kept saying the miles fares were like sold out or something. So, I mean, it's peak summer, so I get it, but we ended up just like booking flights to like where we could. So we fly into Naples. We're looking at maybe doing like a night in the Amalfi Coast. We were just trying to fly straight to Sicily, but then we're gonna have to book that like second flight separately. So might spend a night around there. We might go to, I don't know how to say this, Ish Ischia? Mm, I don't know, which is like an island near Naples. I think we're gonna go to Taormina, which I've been to before. I did like a full Sicily trip. I have Sicily vlogs. So this was like 
before White Lotus. Um, but I went all over during that and I feel like the only place I would really want to go back to is Tower Mina. So we might go there and spend some time in Mallorca and then our flight back home, what we could get is out of Lisbon. So I've been to Lisbon again, Giselle has never. So we want to spend at least like a night in Lisbon. But all of you guys were like telling me other places to go in Portugal and now I'm just like so torn. I'm like, do I want to spend more time in Portugal and like cut Tower Mina or like, I don't know. We need to really finalize all of that. I just feel like so many choices, you know? Next question, how to save for traveling but still enjoy your life daily? In short, I would recommend my budgeting video, which I did back in December. I feel like having a solid budget in place and like being aware of what all of your fixed costs are, what those total, total out to, um, how much discretionary spending you have to work with in order to be saving and prioritizing your savings goals. I just feel like Awareness is key. Like thinking you're gonna save without like a plan and a system is just maybe not the most realistic. So the method I use and used to use before having like a full budget where I was still like saving above my spending way back when, you know, had cheap rent, had all that, was just like picking an amount for any savings category. It could be saving for a house down payment like I was doing, saving for travel, whatever. It's just having a set amount you set aside into savings every week or every month. I liked doing it every week. If it's all in your one savings account, just like tracking how much belongs to that category so you're not like spending from it. Also on a money note, someone said, I would love to hear how you and Giselle split expenses. Do you guys have separate accounts and then one joint? For how we split expenses, and maybe I'll go more in depth on in this at a later time, but I feel like ever since buying a house, everyone, I understand the nosiness, you know, I get it, but everybody wants to know who paid for what, how do you guys pay for this and that? Like, it's no secret. I think it's obvious that like the content creator and the family is probably making more than the other person. So I don't think this is so like taboo to talk about. I think it's obvious that like my salary is higher than Giselle's. We do both make fluctuating income, you know, doing this. My job obviously varies how much I make in a month based on my brand deals or whatever. And then Giselle, she works in tech sales. When I met her, she was actually a teacher and she has totally changed her career in the past like couple of years. Like she's got her real estate license. Like people made that seem so hard. I'm not saying it's not hard. I honestly, I don't think I could do it. I don't think I could study and take a test again for the rest of my life. But Giselle is so hardworking and makes things look so easy. This sounds bad. She made studying for her real estate stuff and all that look so easy that I was like, there's no way she's prepared for this. Like when she told me she passed, not to say I didn't believe in her, but I was just surprised because like, I would have had to be like studying and taking notes and practicing and all this like so much more than I guess I noticed that she was. Like Giselle is just so hardworking and never complains to the point that if you're not paying attention, you'd miss it. Like how much she is just like has her head down and is working, you know? But anyways, she got her real estate license as like a side thing. Within the same time frame, she took a tech sales course. So she took like a temporary job working from like 6 a.m. to 3 every day so she could take this course at night and then like got a job in tech sales and found something that she is so perfectly fit for that is just like, it makes me so happy. Like when she was teaching, she's a great teacher, but like I feel for you teachers, like how freaking hard, just like, I mean, all of it is the low pay, what you deal with at school, like what you deal with with parents, how frustrating it is to not have resources, energy, like we're not gonna get into this, but it just makes me so happy now to see her in a job where she has like a path to advancement where she's already been promoted. She's about to get promoted again, like where her performance is like truly dependent on like her and her alone. And I'm going on a tangent here from what I was saying, but Giselle's income, it's been going up and up and up. She building it up. Like if I ever become irrelevant, like Giselle's carrying the family, but we do not have a joint account. I don't know if that's something we would do in the future. Well, we have our joint like mortgage account, but that's not interesting. It's just like what we put in each month for our mortgage. And again, I feel like this is obvious to say that like I pay a little bit more towards our mortgage than she does in a way that is proportionate to our income. And that's what, when we take trips and stuff, that's kind of how it is too. Like we're both contributing. I am contributing more because I have more discretionary income, but we don't look at it that closely in terms of like proportions and percentages and all that. We just both are always contributing to everything together. Sometimes we'll go to dinner and Giselle will pay. Sometimes we'll go and I will pay. Sometimes we split it. Like there's really no system. I feel like this is like maybe a boring answer. It's just that like we do each have our own accounts, but hopefully that answers some of the juicy questions of who's paying for the house. Like we both are. I actually could not have bought this house without Giselle's help. Giselle's older than me, in case she didn't know, she's 33. She had a good chunk of savings for a down payment that like I could not have by myself pay for the down payment on this house. We were matching the down payment. Yeah, not that any of that's anybody's business. I just feel like it's like obvious, like why 
I don't know. I feel like it's not weird to talk about. So then lastly, I'm gonna round this out with just a general, how am I doing lately? Good, I'd say good, not great. I'd say I have my great moments. And this is kind of just like me throughout all of life is like I have my great days where I'm feeling just like I'm on top of the world. I'm so grateful for every little thing in my life and like I'm just having a wonderful day. I'm not having bad days lately, but then I just have some days where I'm just like so tired and like out of it. And that's kind of how I've been feeling the past couple of days. It's just like, you know, it's been a busy past few days, just like, you know, typical life. Which on that note, you know how people say, um, like, you never realized the last time you were gonna play on the playground or whatever. No, you never realized the last time that you were gonna check off your to-do list. Like the whole thing and then be like, oh, there's nothing left to do. Like, no, like my to-do list will never be empty for the rest of my life. It's been years. Overall, I am doing really good. I'm going home um, here in a few days. That is it for the Q&A. <laughs> if you guys have any questions or comments, I would love if you leave them below um, or any video requests as well. Thank you again for watching and I will see you in my next video.